to register to Stephen Wu, representing yourself, and Wuri Juntos. That's correct. Uh, to spine against the bill, is that correct? That's correct. Please proceed. Thank you, Chair McGeehan and members of the committee. My name is Stephen Wu. I'm the organizing and policy manager of Uri Juntos. We are an immigrant rights organization advancing the safety of Asian and all immigrants across Texas. And I'm, I'm here to testify against HB 884. This bill continues a dangerous and violent trend of criminalizing immigrants and migrants seeking safety by interweaving federal immigration enforcement with local and state law enforcement, essentially enhancing Operation Lone Star to get us closer to a police state where the lines between our immigration and criminal legal systems disappear completely. And by just being an immigrant or migrant, especially those who are undocumented, low income, and not proficient in English, means potentially a death sentence. By making it more explicit for federal customs and border protection CBP officers to have authority to enforce state criminal laws without limitations or bounds of where within the state they can enforce this, what's to stop one of these agents to one, go further, to challenge and violate community members' first or fourth amendment rights, as we saw in Egbert versus Bull, and two, go past the 100 mile zone they're limited to. Not only have we seen our state enable enforcement behavior that ignores federal law, we have also spent over $4.4 billion of state taxpayer money to make it happen. On the note of cost, uh, we noticed that the fiscal note for HB 884 determined that the state would not incur any significant costs and that agencies have enough resources to implement this policy. While I'm sure that CBP has a requisite equipment and tools to conduct these punitive acts, as evident in the almost 2.8 million enforcement actions in fiscal year 22 and constant use of force incidents, if they are to be enabled to enforce state law, it is not out of the realm of possibility to see agents see this as a green flag to focus more on criminal felony offenses outside the realm of immigration, both at the border and in the interior of Texas. Who would pay for that? Who, would that not be the states? Would the federal government pick up this tab? If so, it's interesting to see when our state chooses to accept federal subsidies for punishments and we don't for increasing access to health care. I mentioned earlier that HB 884 continues a dangerous trend of committing state violence on our immigrant and migrant communities. What these conversations in the Capitol loses out on are the perspectives of those who are directly impacted. These hearings are during the day, during the week, when most of our community members who are most affected would have to work and take care of their families and are robbed of their voice and power. To our community members know this, we will continue fighting. No matter how many punitive bills are introduced, that they try to erase existence or deny dignity, we will always be here to defend, to uplift your voice, and to one day sooner than later, live and move in a Texas where we no longer have to justify our humanity. I urge community members to heed the words of advocates and community members here today and vote no on HB 884. Thank you. Members, any questions? Thank you, sir. Chair now recognizes Nicole Ma.